Hello everyone, my name is John Dada, the resident pastor of ROCCG Open Heaven Parish here in Accrington, United Kingdom. I welcome you to our YouTube channel. The word you're about to listen to right now, I'm very certain is going to bless you in a huge way. So do well to share the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos, and turn on your notification button so you don't get to miss out each time a new word is uploaded. And I look forward to hearing your testimonies. Let's dive in. I want to thank everyone for so far. And I want to thank our pastor for giving me the opportunity to be here. And we give God the glory. And I believe that God is set to do something in our lives today. So let's just worship the Lord. I just want to praise you, Lord. I lift my hands to say. Yeah, you can rise up to your feet now. I love you. For you are everything to me, and I exalt your holy name on high. I'm going to sing it again. Oh, I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I lift my hands to say, I love you, for oh, you are everything. To be and I exalt your holy name. Oh, I exalt your holy name. Exalt your name on high. Lord, we worship you. We give you glory. Lord, we just lift our hands, O oh God, to say that we love you. For you are everything that we need. You are everything that, Lord, we need. Lord, we just give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. For your name is glorious. For your name is worthy to be praised. And so, Lord, we welcome you, Lord, this morning. Lord, we know that we've come, O oh Lord, not unto ourselves, but unto you. So it's not unto us, not unto us, O oh God, but unto you be all the glory. Lord, this morning we ask for your presence. We know you are here. We know that, Lord, when we speak, Lord, you hear us. We know that, Lord, when we gather, Lord, you speak. And when your word comes into our lives, it transforms us. And so, Lord, do that which you do always. So, God, let our hearts be filled with joy. Let our spirits, O God, be enlightened. And let our minds, O God, be strengthened. That we will know what your will for us is. And none of us shall live here the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are not married, get your own. <laughs> the Bible says, it is now the time when every man will carry his own cross. <laughs> so carry your own. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So today, I'm very, I will hope I'm very quick. Um, but it's something that if you take, it will change your life. And I mean it. The reason is, it changed mine. And everything I'm telling you is what I do. And if it has the power to change my life, it means it has the power to change your life. So today we are going to be talking about reframing your world by your words. Reframing your world by your words. And you know our theme for the month is what? Not thy word. And you know one thing that we like as Christians is what? We like it when it depends on God, isn't it? We like it. 
yeah, come, everybody, come now. Let me lay hands on you and you receive a miracle now. We like it. Because why? We can blame God if it doesn't happen, isn't it? At least it wasn't my fault. It was God that said it, <laughs> isn't it? But then when God flips the coin and says, I've given it to you to do. And then now we become, ah, God, did you really mean it? You know, is this really true? But he's saying, at thy word. Now there is one thing for God to say, but the question is what you say. Because God can be saying one thing and you are saying another. And two cannot work together except they what? Except they agree. And so we need to look at that from your own perspective. What is your word? At thy word. At God's word. But now, what is my own side of it? Because God has put so much power in man. The Bible says we were created in what? In his image and in his likeness. Meaning that everything that we ever need in our lives, God provided. And the Bible says on the seventh day, God rested. And he has not started working since then. And everything he set in motion from that day has not stopped working the same way he did it. The Bible said he made the moon to shine at night and he made the sun to come at the daytime. And he said an evening and morning walks. And that is how God did it. And since then, he set the times and the seasons. And all of them, they come. It does not matter what they say about climate change. Winter must come in that year. Spring must come in that year. Fall must come in that year. Summer must come in that year. Every aspect of God's thinking and the things he set in motion, they are always there. The question is, why don't we produce the results that he apportioned for man to produce? Because after that, he told what? He said, man, I give it to you to do what? To dominate, to replenish, to subdue, to multiply over the whole earth. So the question is, why? And you know, in my, in my experience, I've told you, I grew up, I'm increased for all my life. I don't know any time I was in the world. So I've grown up in, in, inside church. In fact, basically, I, there was, at 10 years old, I was basically living inside church. And so I've seen believers, and I always ask myself, why is it that one thing is on the Bible, but then when it comes to our own lives, it doesn't seem the same? Why do we struggle? Why is it that things seem not to be working? Why is it that the Bible seems to be a story to a lot of believers, but some believers are having results from it? The difference is clear. And we are going to look at it today. So let's run as usual. You know me. I like to read my scriptures early so that we can run. So Proverbs 18.21, I think if you can help me, one person open Proverbs 18.21. Another person, please open Mark 11.23. And then the main verse is, uh, main chapter, uh, main scripture is going to be 1 Peter 3.8-10. to 10. Does anybody have Proverbs 18.21? Just read, just read, you know, read like an evangelist. Proverbs 18.21. Okay, it's here. Death and life are what? In the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall do what? Shall eat the fruit thereof. Do you love your tongue? Say it now. Do you love your tongue? You love it. Which of them does it produce? Is it death or does it produce life? It says both of them are tied up inside your mouth. That red thing that you see, it is not ordinary. It says it has the power to produce life. And it also has the ability to produce death. Whichever result you want, say it. And it will come to pass. The next one, Mark eleven twenty three, please. Lovely. Thank you, media. So for verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall do what? He shall, he, did he say he may 
have whatsoever he saith? No. He said, he shall. In law, they say, when they say, you shall. So it is, it is something that is binding on you. It says, once you say it, you shall have whatsoever. It did not qualify whether it's good or bad. He said, he shall have whatsoever. He said, whatever. So that means that what you are having now is what you said. Now let's go. I love this one. First Peter 3, 8 to 10. Oh, I love this one. Why I started from verse 8 was because I wanted us to, you know, I like, I like so that we follow from the grassroots. Say, so finally, be ye all of one mind. Have compassion one of, an, one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. So Peter knew courtesy. He said, be polite. Not rendering evil for evil or insult for insult. Don't say you, your head to, your head to. No. But contrary wise, he said, blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should do what? Inherit a blessing. These were statements of fact Peter was making. He said, you are called so that you can inherit a blessing. So, don't render evil for evil. Don't use your mouth as insult. He insults you, I insult him back. He said there, you are called. He said, knowing. This is the reason. Your perspective, your mindset. No, that person, he comes from a different angle. He's coming from a different inheritance. But he's saying, knowing that you have a different inheritance. You have been called into a blessing. For he, oh, I love this. I will show you where he got it from. You know, scriptures, you must understand that what we call scriptures, you know, of course, Peter did not read the book of Romans. He did not read the book of Matthew, Luke, and he, he never knew that such a thing existed. What the scriptures that they talk about are those prophets, the things written by Moses and the prophets. And so that's what he's quoting here. So Peter had read it and he had become a part of his life. He says, for he that will love life. Do you love life? Oh, do you love life? Oh, trust me, I love life. <laughs> I love life. Do you like the good things of life? Now, Peter is telling you, for if you love the things of life and you want to see good days. <laughs> you see, there is one thing to love long life, but some people can live long and they are suffering. Okay, I'm a doctor, I know now. We have to just give them medication to just keep living, you know. At the point now, in I think you see in Ireland, one of the, uh, in the Isles of Man, that they are trying to pass a law so people can just kill themselves. You know what? They have long life, but they don't want to live again. They are just tired. So, but Peter is saying here, he that will love life and see good days. Let him do what? Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him refrain his tongue. From evil and his lips from speaking lies. He's not talking about telling a lie to someone. No, he's talking about when you say things that are not in consonant with the word of God. When you're saying something that God did not say about you, that is a lie. And so he's telling you if you want to live long and have an enjoyable long life, then you need to do what? Refrain your tongue from evil and do what? from speaking God. Now, let's quickly go to Psalm 34, 9 to 14. Because that's where he got it from. He got it from the Psalm of David. And that's why you need to understand why did David produce results. I always tell people what I do not like. I remember then, you know, when I do well in school, someone would say, oh yeah, you know, you are just, you are just blessed. I say, eh, 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 eh. you need to stop that. It's insulting to me when you tell me that. I'm just blessed. Yes, I am blessed. But you need to know that there is a principle to it. It didn't come because God just decided to benefit this one. You, you are blessed. You, you are not blessed. Forget it. No, no. He's saying it's a principle that if you work, it will work for anybody. Irrespective of where they are from. So, now from verse 9, please. I want, you to, sh I want to show you this. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. 
There is no want. Why are you wanting then? He said, there is no want to him that fear him. Yes, then, please. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Let's go again. 11. Come ye, children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Remember we said, those that fear the Lord, they will not want. Now David said, let me teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desired life? So have, have you see where that scripture came from? Where Peter got it from? He said, what is that man that desired life and loved many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. That's the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is not, Lord, I worship you, and then I kneel down. No, he's saying the fear of the Lord is being careful with speaking what is not after his will. Because once you begin to open your mouth and say things that are opposite to what God says, you are in opposition to him. And that's why you will find that even though you belong to God, you are taking yourself out of your inheritance of the blessing. It says that because you have been called to inherit a blessing. So we are called to inherit a blessing. And what are words? Words are sounds of our thoughts. They are verbal expressions of our thoughts and intentions. Basically, when you talk, it is just sending sound waves. And scientists have known that the whole earth is full of electromagnetic radiation. Everything that you see as matter, has, it has a force on it. Just because this thing is standing here does not mean that it is inactive. No, there are forces that are working to keep this thing here. If not, this mic should be falling to the ground. If not, this thing cannot stand like this. It should be falling. By the time a different force acts on it in this direction and opposes this stability it drops that's why it falls if you push it and so there is nothing that on earth does not have a life and that is why jesus when he lived all through his life he spoke when he reaches bread he takes the bread and he speaks to the bread he reaches a tree he talks to the tree he reaches anything that jesus saw he will speak to it he will speak to fish what is it? He told Peter, go and find the fish. When you kill it, open the belly, you will see money inside. So at every point in time, Jesus always directed his life in the right direction. He speaks. But you know, there are other words and they are non-verbal words. For many of us, the trouble is not just the one we speak with our mouth. It's the one that we speak inside our heart. I don't even know, sir. Is it because my grandfather did not do this? Is it because? Uh, is it because? Oh, they don't like me in this place. Is it because? Is it because I don't speak English like them? Is it? You have told yourself. No, nobody has talked to you, but you have told yourself and believed it, and you started acting on it all by yourself. These people, they don't like me. Look at them. When other people are moving, they smile. When other people are not moving, they don't smile. When me, I come, they don't smile. There must be something wrong. Oh, for me, it's because maybe, you see, there is always something. There is always something against me. Because I realize when other people apply for this job, they get it. But me, they don't give it to me. There must be something in my household. You have been telling yourself all those things and speaking into your life without knowing that those things are the things sending out the energy that you are carrying around you. Why? Because you shall have whatsoever you say. Hebrews 11.3 tells us that by faith we know that the walls were framed by the word of God. The walls were framed by the word of God. We see that in Genesis chapter, chapter 1. It says the earth was without form and void. And what happened? The spirit of the Lord was hovering. Nothing happened. The anointing was present. Nothing. <laughs> it was that. In fact, if you read message, if message translator, you, you will even be like, is something wrong? He said it was a soup of nothingness. Not 
everything, everything was bad. It was dark. And the Holy Ghost was still there. <laughs> Nothing. And the Bible says, and God spoke. God decided it's enough. And he spoke. He said, no, it's no longer going to be shapeless. I am going to reframe the world after what I want it to be. And so he began to bring forth. And now when you read deeper and read into chapter 2, you realize that after God spoke, nothing happened. Oh, most of us, when we read it, we think that as soon as God spoke, then plants jumped out from the thing, you know, and chickens started flying. No, no. The Bible says after God finished, there was nothing. Why? There was no man to till the ground. He was still waiting <laughs> until he had created the last one. When God was done, he now said, now start popping out. They were seeds that he was sending in. And the Bible said by the time he formed man, he now gave man and said, now take over. So there was now a man to manage what he wanted. And those things started popping out. And that is why sometimes we sit down and I see believers, we pray. You know, there are believers that they can pray. Oh, oh my goodness, trust me. There are people that can pray. I've not started yet. You know, there are people. They can pray. But then I still wonder, so why after all of this prayer, some, there are people that will pray three hours non-stop. Yet, at the end, they are still suffering. And I'm like, what happened? Is it that you're not praying the same prayer I'm praying? Because me, sorry, I don't have to pray that long. In fact, I've told God, one of my biggest desires is I want to pray for 24 hours. I pray. But there are things I don't pray about. Because when I start praying, you would think I'm joking. Because I just sit down, we are discussing with God. We talk, he talked, I talk, he talked. And then by the time I'm done, I'm like, wow, God, thank you. That was a good meeting. Why? Because we are creating. We don't sit down to discuss the devil. No, the devil's matter had been resolved. We sit down to discuss what are we creating next? What are we creating? Because I can't afford to sit down and look at my life and allow the devil to wreak havoc. Because he does not have such power. No, the power was put in me. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. And then he now turned, therefore go ye. He said, I have given this same authority to you. So go. So the authority is not in Jesus' hand. It's in me now. And when I realize it, I realize why the devil cannot be a match. No, I don't. I don't think about demons in my village. They were dealt with. And anyone that tries, I'll put them where they belong. And they will not like it again. You see, there were demons that they came to, you know, they, were, they met Jesus. And they were begging Jesus, please don't take us into that ship. Jesus still knew the ship would still go inside the water anyway. And it's okay, I permit you. And they still were. And they, they ran the ship into the water. Or the pigs. So, this is what God was doing. He said there, listen, if you love your life, you want to see good days, he said you need to keep your tongue from speaking the wrong things. You need to begin to speak the right things to yourself. What are the things you are telling yourself today? Now I want to see. Some of us, we make the mistake. We think that it is positive thinking. No, it's not. I'm not talking about positive thinking. They teach you all that in yoga. And all. It's nice. It's okay. But we are not talking about that now. No, we are talking about coming from the position of faith. The devil knows how to manufacture because he has been there. He knows how the spiritual realm works. So it's easy for them to manufacture ideas. But it is only a prototype of what they saw from the kingdom. But what God has, he gives us what is called faith. The ability to bring to pass things that do not exist. That's what he gives to us. It means that I can look at something and I say it doesn't exist, but I'm going to create it. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to create it. Oh, it doesn't matter. Because one of the greatest things God gave to man is the ability to change your situation. You, are the, you can change your situation if you don't like it. No, the only reason you have not changed is because you have not thought about it. The day you decide enough is enough is the day it begins to change. 
Because then you will begin to plant seeds that will take you in that direction. Sometimes we speak casual words. The other thing is that we speak from a different point of view. So we, we look at ourselves. The world says, oh, this is impossible. Oh, we cannot do this. Oh, you know, there is so much sickness in the land. Oh, there is so much poverty around. And then you now look at those things and then you start reinforcing them to yourself. You start telling yourself, you know, we have to be factual. You know, we have to be real. Why don't you be real? You know, you just have to be real. These people don't like to be real. Are you sure it's real? Because it may not be real. Just because the Bible tells us that the things we see, they are the ones that are unreal. But the things we don't see, they are the ones that are eternal. They are the ones that are actually real. And that is why, just because you do not know a Jaguar of 2020 or 20, 2025 exists, does not mean it doesn't exist. It's just not existing in your mind yet. But the people producing it, it are they, in fact, they've already moved to the next one. They are already 2030. The phone you are carrying in your hand, while you are still there, talking about, oh, it's the latest phone. The person who manufactured it knows that this thing in our own, we already know the phones. That is coming inside it. And we have already produced the one for 2030. We are waiting for the next six months. So we try to get more money from you. They have created it. And that is why the people who are going to rule the world in 2030. They are already doing it now. Just because you don't know it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And that is why I tell people don't walk aimlessly. You know, Paul said, walk circumspectly, as wise, not as fools. He said, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Just because you don't know, there are people making policies right now that you are not going to see it. They know when that policy will come to fruition. The only problem is that is when you start complaining. But they started making it a long time ago. And then you are wondering why. And that is why the Bible says that the children of Issachar, they had understanding of the times. And that's why they had their brethren in command. Everybody was always coming to them. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? They say, you know, in 2030, we foresee that there are going to be holograms where you are going to make, you are just going to stay here and you can fly to London without having to move from your house. And somebody said, how can that be possible? Wait. They did it. When I was small, we used to watch James Bond. We used to see, is it the man with the golden gun, whatever. And then he would be having cars that will fly. He would be having, you know, watches that can do many things. Today, those things are there. You thought they were joking, but they were showing you. And they were just trying to play around with it. So it tells me that my life in 2030 is determined by what I decide to do today. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter what happened with my family, with my children, whatever. The only one I can determine is the next one. I can determine the future for myself. And so that means if I can do the right thing. I'll give you three things quickly. The first one is to align with God. Oh, I love this. You see, the first step is to align with God. Because many times our problem is we want to fashion it by ourselves. Do you think you know all the mistakes you are going to make in life? Do you know you know all the places you are going to go in? Do you think you know them? No, you do not. There is only one person that knows those things, and that is who? God. So he knows exactly where you are going to be. He knows exactly who you are going to meet. And so what happens is for you to align with his will. When you come in alignment with him, then you can begin to find out what is your plan. Because the problem we have is we want to set our own plans. Why? Because we are seeing brother so-so and so. We are seeing our sister. Oh, I've seen this. My Oh, my elder brother, he does this. So we are looking at their lives. And we want to fashion our lives according to them. But the Bible says that God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all you could ever ask or imagine. Meaning that he knows far more than your human mind is able to comprehend. And that is why it's much easier when he's the one fashioning your life it's much easier when you come to receive the template of your life from him and that's what happened to abraham abraham had been walking around for 25 for 75 years his life had no much meaning he was a great man but he didn't have a child and then god comes to him at 75 years and say come and that's why the first step that we take 
in aligning ourselves with God is separation. No, a time has to come when you say enough is enough, and that will drive you to separate yourself unto God. And he told Abraham, you need to come out. Your problem is you are so tied down to your roots. You need to get out from there. And he got out. He got him out. But Abraham got out. But that place did not get out of him. And so it took some time for Abraham to begin to get the things that God needed to get him through a journey. That's the same thing that happened with Israelites. Something they would have done in four days. They had to take 40 years. Why? God needed to deal with the problems they came with. The baggage that they've been carrying around. Why? Because he wants them when he reaches the end. They can trust him and him alone. They can know that their success is not dependent on anybody. And that's what happened here. You need to come down, come out. And then you need to align yourself. And then God began to speak with him. He brought Lot. And then they became rich. But he thought that was it. But it wasn't. And then trouble began. They, their riches became their problem. And then the next thing, they separated. And the Bible says, as soon as they separated, God came to Abraham and said, now, let me talk to you again. He said, now look to the left, to the right, to the... Everything you see, it is yours. I've given it to you. And then Abraham was like, how is this going to be? And then God said, don't worry, I'm going to show you. And God began to show Abraham what is going to happen to his descendants. So the things that Israelites saw, Abraham already saw it. That's why he's a father of faith. The Bible says he was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. So he already saw everything the 40 400 years later he saw it ahead of time can you see your destiny 400 years from now <laughs> some people say even four years i don't know but abraham god showed him and that takes me to the next point which is for me the biggest if you don't catch anything today catch it and i pray the holy spirit with you because i have to rush i'm rushing through them but i i believe the holy ghost will put it in your heart this, for me, is the most important. Is that you need to understand your seasons. You see, many times we pray, but we are praying against our season. Because many times we want something to happen now. Oh, Lord. And that has been fueled by us. You know, many times we just, oh, God, now, now. I want it now, now. We have been told that because you believe, so you will get it. It doesn't work like that. Listen, God is a God of order. He has set everything in motion. You see that there was a time that Israel, like, now, I told you now, in Genesis 15, 16, 17, he showed Abraham what is going to happen to the Israelites. Meaning that until that 400 years had come to pass, nothing is going to change that situation. If you like, pray. It's not going to change that captivity. Because that was part of the story. It was part of his story. And the Bible talks about Daniel. They were in captivity in, in Babylon. And he did not, they did not know that it was going to happen, but it was written. Now, by the time it came to pass, now Daniel could see from the books that the time of captivity is supposed to be over. And then he now went and started praying in alignment with God. Because for us, many times, we are against our season. You know, I remember a time when I was in Nigeria and I was like, God, I was, I mean, I in school, I was mad, you know. Now I'm seeing a lot of people who are getting into residency and I'm here four years into it and I'm still trying to get in. And then the Lord told me, move too soon. Don't move. Why? Because I'm trying to judge my season by the seasons of the people around me. I think things should happen to me according to them. No. He told me, listen, with Joseph, he had all the dreams, but his season had not come. No, he tried to get people to get him there out faster, but it didn't happen. No, God was waiting for a time, a time and a season to come. And so no matter how much Joseph wanted to get out of his captivity, nothing was going to happen. Why? It was part of the process. And for some of us, that is our problem. When we are going through the process, we can't. We just want it out. And that's why we are frustrated. You are frustrated with your prayer. You say, but God, I've been praying all this. No, the problem is you are still thinking that God is working at your own time. No, God does not work at your own time. God works at his own time. And if you learn to align yourself with God's seasons, you will realize that there are seasons in your life. God will, suddenly things will move and there are also seasons that it do not move like that. 
And it is not the devil. You know, I remember that time. Someone came, a prophet, he said, well, you know, I see, you know, you're someone that when you walk, it seems like you're not getting all the things you deserve. Remember, I think it's a lie. Not true. It is not me. That, that, that prophecy is not me. You don't be too quick to claim a prophecy that is not yours now. I said, no, 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 no. Me. This place? No. Because of me. The hospital grew more than they had. Because of me. They couldn't do anything. In fact, when I leave, the patients who ask for me, even when the MD is there, because of me, the MD had to increase my salary. Within a space of two years or one year, I had my salary increase up to four or five times. So it can't be that. No, no, no. That is not possible. Just because I have not moved from where I am now to where you think I should be does not mean that God is not with me. The Bible says, and God was with Joseph in Potiphar's house, and everything he did prospered. He was still a servant. So just because you have not owned the business yet, just because you are still serving in that place, no, it does not mean that God is not with you. No, that is God with you. He will touch the things you touch to prosper. But it is a training process. No, God is not a quick person. He doesn't want to yield quick results. Just pour out and then you end tomorrow. No, he wants to give you a sustainable life. He wants to make sure that when he's done with you, you'll be well made. You'll be well cooked. And nothing will move you any longer. And I told him, no, it's not me. When my time comes, when the appointed time comes, he will move me. And when the appointed time came, he moved me. And in less than five years, everything I was looking for, I had. I had everything. That's because God is not working at your own time. You need to learn that God works in times and seasons. And you need to learn what do you do? When those seasons come for you, do what Abraham did. The Bible says, listen, Abraham, he was promised a baby from 75 years. Before he got it, it was 25 years later. But what did Abraham do? The Bible says Abraham was not weak in faith. He gave glory to God. In other words, every time the devil wanted to remind him that you have not gotten it, he said, no, <laughs> he that said it, he is faithful to complete it. If he said it, he is not a man that he should lie. He's not a son of man that he will repent. Whatever he said he will do, that is what he will do. And so I'm not worried, like Job, Job said. He said, all the days of my waiting, I will wait until my change comes. So I'm not going to be in a hurry. The Bible said, do not be like the mule, you know, who's too slow. It said, don't be like the horse that is too fast. No, walk in God's pace. Don't let people push you to want to do things that God has not moved you to be. Just because you are where you are does not mean it's the devil that made it there. No, just because things are not working the way, just because you're not driving the kind of thing you want to drive, you're not living where you want to live, just because, oh, your children are not yet where they... No, 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 no. It is still the process. The question is, where is your heart? Because if your heart is with God, the Bible says God will keep him in perfect peace whose heart is stayed on him. Meaning your end will always be peace. It will always be peace. I'm going to end here. Because this is where I want us to pray. Because of time, we have to jump. The last one is enforce your season with the right words. 1 Timothy 1.18. Let's read that. Because this is where we are going to pray. I love it. You see, there are principles in the Bible. In my life, I know. I've seen it. That's why I don't, I'm not in a hurry. I'm not, I don't even, I, I'm not looking for greatness. Uh, listen, I'm already great all by myself. I don't need anybody to make, you know, to give me validity. I don't need it. No matter how high the person is or low, I don't need it. Why? I know who I serve. When I leave my room, I know what we discuss. And I know that, oh my goodness, what he has shown me, what you see now, you will not even think, you'll be wondering what is, that was rubbish compared to where I'm going. That's why I know I can never fall. No, I cannot fall. There is a reason. Anybody that's waiting for me, ah, don't worry, these people, ah, they are going to fail. Don't worry. It's just a matter of time. You know, whatever goes up, comes down. It doesn't work like that with me. Whatever goes up, stays up for me. <laughs> that is the way my life is. 
if the devil likes it or not, let all of them in the village gather. I'm telling them now. It is not possible for them to stop me. Why? Because the person that owns my life. <laughs> Listen, I'm not owning myself. Oh. Somebody owns me. That's why if you are still the one handling your life, I'm sorry. Because you are too vulnerable to attack. But when your life is in God's hands, and I mean really in God's hands, where you know that he's the one that is making you, it's not possible for the devil. Jesus said all that the Father has given me. He says none of them is lost. He says it is not possible for the enemy to pluck them out of my hands. Yeah, so... First Timothy 1.18. It says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, be, went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. <laughs> you see, there is a difference when you are trying to pray to God for something. But there is a difference when you are, trying, when you are now praying out the will of God on that matter. There are two different things. I'm asking God for a car. That is you trying to want it. But when God says, I am going to, I'm giving you a car. That is a different thing. No, that means I am now in alignment with God. And that means it is not me that wants the car. It is God that wants it. So meaning that all I just need to do is to relax. But what I need to do is to war a good warfare. That is the good warfare. That's why when we say, oh, I'm not... Forgive me, I'm not a fan of spiritual warfare. This is my own kind of spiritual warfare. I go back in alignment with what God has spoken. Why? Because what God has said, He said His word, when it comes out of His mouth, He said it will never come back void. It must fulfill what it, what it went to do. Meaning that if I am in alignment with God, with what He's spoken, and I skip saying what He said, it is impossible for it not to come to pass. It is impossible. Not even all the demons on earth can stop it. The reason is, no man can stand against the word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth can pass away, but not one jot of my word will pass away until it's fulfilled. So when I go back in my closet, what do I do? Oh, before I got married. I remember then. Yeah, before I got married, fifth year, God told me, in fifth year, you're going to see your wife. That's why I say it's good to be in alignment with God. I'm not, so I don't try to create things for myself. No. Even when I wanted to buy a car, God told me now it's time to change that car. I said, okay, so which one? He said, now move. And by the time he went, I went for a, a Tokumbo. And God said, it's a lie. Now move to the brand new. <laughs> and I got the brand new at a better price than the Tokumbo. I'm not lying. I have the proof. Because I actually deposited for the second hand. And then God said, move to this one. And then I got there and we agreed on a brand new one that was £100 per month cheaper. So what I'm trying to say is that there is a time when you are trying to forge your own life. And there is a time when God is the one forging it for you. There are two different things. And that is what it means to war a good warfare. When you want to war a good warfare, you go back to the prophecies that have been spoken over you. What are those things that God has spoken concerning your life? Like I was saying, when I wanted to get married, I remember, and I was in school, people were wondering, what is this guy's problem? No girl around him. Is he gay? And I'm not lying, they said it. I said, I was just laughing in my neighborhood. And then God told me, fifth year, you are going to see it. And I said, then one day I was going out of the Lord, the Lord told me, the time is now. I said, really? He said, open your eye. And I opened my eye. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> And then the Lord told me, oh, I've given you. He showed me two children. And that's why once, after I've got the two, another one entered. And I said, God, this is not what we discussed. <laughs> and I'm telling the truth. And my wife can't bear me there. I said, but God, you know, I don't know how this one, you know. We did not discuss this one now. And then he was like, okay, whatever you want. I said, no, I don't think they are ready now. Said, okay, fine. The next week he went. So what I'm trying to say is that there is a difference. When you walk in alignment with God, when your warfare is a good warfare, no, you are not trying to create a warfare for yourself. No, you are warring with God on your life. 
So you can take your children and say, Lord, this is not what you showed me concerning this one. This is not what you showed me concerning my husband. No, when I got married, you told me that this is not what our, this is how our family is going to go. So what is this one that is going on now? I remember when I heard of a sister, they were going through a rough patch in their marriage. And they were, in fact, they already beginning to sign the divorce i said god no 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 this is not it this is not your will it is not how you planned it and then he started praying and today by the grace of god they are getting back together what i'm saying is that there is a difference you need to take your life and begin to speak what god is speaking over it what is god saying about your job you know i'm a gp and people are saying oh there's no job blah 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 oh they know there's not I tell you, for me I'm the one that rejects it. No, because I don't know. What I'm saying is, it depends on what you want to say over your own. What is God saying? Because if God took you there, it doesn't matter whatever anybody else is going through. It doesn't matter what else is happening around you. No, it is the word of God that you hold on to. The Bible says we hold it like an anchor. So when we hold it as an anchor, that is our anchor of faith. No, whenever things want to happen in my life, I go back to what God has spoken concerning that matter. And I say, Lord, no, this is not what it said. I need to go back to what we agreed. And I stand by it. And God said, whatever you will have, whatever you say. And then that is what you will have. And is somebody ready to war a good warfare? Is somebody ready to war a good warfare this morning? I want you to go back. <laughs> what are the things? You know, some of you, yeah, we came to the UK. Oh, it's one now you're beginning to complain. No, what was it when you left? That's why I don't leave until God has told me. Now God is moving me to another place. And, it, and I said, God, I don't understand this thing. I don't know. I'm a bit scared. And God said, The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow. And so for me, when I move, if I meet a headache, I don't go back and say, Kai, this thing, maybe I should have not taken this step. Ah, Kai, no, why now? Why did I even, man, I was not following, no, I wasn't following people. No, I go back to the word that God told me. The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow. So there can be no sorrow at all. So when the devil wants to show the sorrow, I say, Lord, no, this is what said so for me the blessing it makes rich and adds no sorrow therefore lord i am rich no sorrow attached i am rich no sorrow attached i am rich no sorrow attached no sickness attached no trouble attached no breakdown attached no breakup attached in the name of jesus because that is what you said concerning me that is the warfare the bible said the word of god is the sword of the spirit and when we speak he said the word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword it pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of joint and marrow and he said descend out the thoughts and intents of the heart that is the word of god are you ready to speak the word of god for your life listen your life will change your life will change your marriage will change your children will change your finances will change your career will change your health will change the enemy cannot break havoc unless you allow him now it's time to begin to plant the seeds of the right words say lord i love life and i see good days because i refrain my mouth from speaking evil and my lips from speaking guile i refuse to speak the lies of the enemy no 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 it doesn't matter where the lies come from from. they may come from my office they may come from my family they may come even from my spouse they may even come from my closest friend but lord i refuse whose report will you believe whose report will you believe no we will repeat we will believe that of the lord we will believe that of the lord oh Shatakaya. no we are not spectators we are not spectators. We are not waiting for fate to happen. No, no, no. We are not victims of fate. No, we know we are them that do not draw back. We don't draw back. No, he said, them through faith and patience, we possess our promises. Oh, Shaka Baligad, oh, Shakaya, Rakaya. I don't want to spend two minutes and just begin to declare. Speak. I don't know what your challenges are. But now is the time to begin to reshape it. Begin to reshape it. You may have been speaking the wrong things about it. That's why it has gone the way it is. Now begin to reshape it. 
begin to reframe it begin to reshape it begin to reframe it say lord i come in alignment with your word i come in alignment with your word oh he said by his stripes i am healed for Lord, I am here. He said he was made rich, he was made poor, so I can be through his poverty be rich. Therefore, Lord, I'm not just giving positive confession, I know I am rich, and so whatever comes from me overcomes the world. Whatever comes from me overcomes the world in the name of Jesus. I am rich, 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 I am rich. Oh, I live in health, I will live in health. I live in health, even as my soul prosper. In the name of Jesus, my children, they are growing, they are growing, they are growing in the fear of the Lord, in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. In the name of Jesus, oh, my finances, the devourer is rebuked, the devourer is rebuked. In the name of Jesus, oh, I break the hand of the enemy, I break the hand of the enemy, I break the hand of the enemy against my wife against my children against my sibling against my family against my career i break the hand of the enemy because that is a good warfare in the name of jesus we rebuke the enemy we rebuke the enemy we rebuke the enemy in the name of jesus i wait for my change i wait for my change because now is my time i receive the time of god i receive the time of the holy ghost Oh, Shakabaya, Raderebo Sokobraha, Raderebo Sakaya. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. For some of you, you need to continue to war in good warfare. No, this is not a one time message. It's something you have to wake up in the morning and speak. Some of you have to write it down. Write it down. Remind yourself. This is what God said concerning me. Say it until it comes to pass. Say it until it comes to pass. No, don't wait. In the name of Jesus. Oh, la kabaraba shaka. Robo ro shoto kobra. Rede de bo shaka. Rakaro shaka. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you glory. Come on, lift up your voice. Keep speaking, keep speaking, keep speaking. And that ever shandy, the abato santa yarada, rendo zende riba shanda riba do zande, rendo de kazon de reba shanda rada, rako santa yarada do shataya, and de reba zonta diabada. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, remember the scripture we, we, we read last week. The Bible says the word of God came to two groups of people, and the certain group had no result. Because it was not mixed with faith. So it's not about speaking, but you believe what you're speaking. Because sometimes we can just, you know, do a certain activity because everybody's doing it. These two groups of people were in the same room, hearing the same word. But the word produced for a particular group and did not produce for another group. The same word. The same people were in the, in the crowd thronging Jesus, but only one woman got her healing because of how they responded to this word. Now, with reframing your life through your words, but do you believe the words you're saying, or are you just carrying out a religious activity? Is that faith? Is faith mixing with your words? Is faith backed up with your words? If sin, the Bible says Abraham hoped against hope. So there was nothing that he could hope for because there was no physical sign or anything. But he dug out. He, he, you know how he pressed in and says, I believe against all odds. So whatever you are creating right now, whatever you are speaking, there's always an anointing that backs up every word that God releases. But if that word is not, if, if there is no faith mixed, that anointing is, is to just, it will just go because there's nothing for it to latch onto and walk with. So now somebody, if you need to say, Lord, help my unbelief, like that man say that. If you say, Lord, help my unbelief so I can speak with faith, you need to make that prayer now. Because when you speak this morning, when you speak in this place in just the next two minutes, uh, it's never going to be the same again. But let your word be aligned with faith. Do you believe in what you're saying? Come on, begin to create your world. Begin to create that marriage again. Begin to reframe your world with your world. Hey, God is waiting on you to speak that word mana kante de bakasata harako sente de basonta daya and de de bashanta ya does it look as if when you move when you walk darkness follows you up and down the bible says in him was life and the life of the light of men it is his light that caused a man to shine 
come to that light. Speak light. Marco said that in the Santa Yada. The earth was without form. It was void and that is covered the face of the deep. And God said, enough is enough of the activity of darkness. Bakataya, he said, Let there be light. Somebody say, Enough is enough with the activities of Satan in my life. Enough is enough of every activity of darkness, of every activity of failure, of unproductivity. Light come in, light come in, glory come in, power come in. For he has crowned you with glory and honor. No room for shame. Partner with the word, partner with the word. You said I am proud with glory. You said I am proud with honor. Therefore, thy word and decree. No room for shame. No room for defeat. No room for reproach. No room for failure. No room for stagnation. Where is your good warfare? And those words that God has said concerning your destiny. Where is your good warfare? Enough is never to delay. For your life, enter in that mighty man of valor, enter in that mighty man of valor, enter into the identity of God. We're in your new identity, we're wrong your new identity. Reintroduce yourself to the kingdom of darkness. Hey, hey, somebody reintroduce yourself, reintroduce yourself, reintroduce yourself. Oh, Jesus, we bless you. Your word, oh God. Your word, oh God. Hey, it is sharper than any two edged sword. Pulling down obstacles, restrictions, oppositions, hindrances, barriers. Thank you for your word. Oh, Father, we choose life. With our tongues, we choose life this day. We speak life. We speak healing. We speak increase. We speak multiplication. We speak breakthrough. We speak joy. We speak laughter. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah to the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah to the great I am. Hallelujah to the fountain of living water. Hallelujah to the river of joy himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the great I am. The one who does exceeding. The one who does abundantly. The Bible says he sent what is word. We receive that word for every purpose your word has been released. For this morning, we decree it accomplishes all that has been sent for. Hey, 
Kotaya, hey ta kotaya, hey ta kotaya, hey ta kotaya, kata leba da baya da basande, hey karia kashata. Hallelujah. The scripture that Doc closed with, First Timothy, he says that we should wage a good warfare, 118, a good warfare over all the prophecies that has been spoken. Now, when you talk about prophecies, the spirit of Jesus is the spirit of what? Of prophecy. You're talking about the mind of God. That is what prophecy is. It's just re revealing to you the mind of God for your life. But now the word of God says, who will know what is in the mind or in the heart of man except the spirit of man? And who would also know what is in the heart, in the mind of God, except the spirit of God? The only way we know God's mind for us is when we are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. That is what, why he said, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. It has not even entered the heart of man what God has prepared for you and I, but by his spirit. He has revealed. So the only way he reveals and the only way you can see his mind for you is because you're in partnership. You're in relationship with him. You cannot wage a good warfare concerning the prophecy over your life when you don't even know the prophecy. Some people here don't know the prophecy over their lives. So what are you waging war concerning? So if you're in this room or you're listening to us online, and you want to know what has been written concerning you. The Bible says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, Psalm 47, Psalm Hebrews 1, 7, 2. It says, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will, O God. You can only come in the volume, in the manifestation of what has been written of you when you know what has been written of you. So if you're in the room, there is nothing to be embarrassed. Nothing, absolutely. And if you're listening to us online, and you don't know Jesus, actually, you know about Jesus, but you don't know him personally. You don't have an intimate relationship with him. Because that's the only way you can know what is written concerning you. It may sound funny when he was saying, you know, some people don't even know what their next four years is. I'm like, why are you on about four years? You've never thought about four weeks or four months. And it's true. But the Spirit of God will reveal to you. And that's the only reason you will refuse to settle for less. Because you already know who you are in Christ Jesus. But you will accept everything and everything when you don't know who you are. The only way you wage this warfare is when you know. You're not saying, no devil, you're a liar. No way, it's not possible. I refuse to be less than who God has created me because you know. So if you are here, raise up your hands with me. And make this declaration and this confession. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to hear and receive your word. I confess this morning, this afternoon, that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I ask you, oh God, by your blood that has been shed at Calvary, that you can wash me, that you cleanse me, and that you forgive me above all in the name of Jesus. I confess Jesus and I accept Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior. I re re relinquish every partnership I have with darkness. I relinquish the partnership I have with the world. I break it in the name of Jesus. And I say, Lord, I surrender unto you. Help me to walk this race with you. Help me to walk life with you. Help me to be in partnership with you. Help me to serve you. Help me to live for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for you who knew no sin became all of mine, that I may become your righteousness through Christ Jesus. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for the celebration in heaven. In Jesus' name. If you said this prayer, I welcome you to the body of Christ. Sometimes people feel embarrassed and you don't have to be. But if you're in this room and you said this prayer, please see the mini, one of the ministers, any of them, any of them, Sister Purity, Dr. Aku, Dr. Michael, see any of them, if myself, Pastor T, and we'll take it further. And if you're online and you made this prayer, you can drop us um, a DM on our um, chat and we'll also send you a message. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and thank God and say, Father, reveal. Because some people do not know. Let's not assume that everybody knows. 
But eventually you don't know what God has prepared for you. But eventually you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus. Say, Lord, open my eyes to see. I want to see me as you see me. I want to know me as you know me. How about Kata Yedede? Because when you see you, you will not settle for crumbs. You will not settle for less. Say, Lord, open my eyes to see me as you see me. In the name of Jesus. What is that? It's written in the volume of the book. Open my eyes to see, Lord. Kaba Shanda Laba Roba Kayando De Basantaya. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We worship you. Oh, Malika Yota Lendona. As this song comes for, just put your offerings, your, your.